there's an analogy that you give about human life that is spectacular in terms of breaking open the illusion of time. And that is that imagine that human beings are like ants in an ant farm. And you can see this ant farm and they're going around the track and to that ant in that ant farm, maybe, you know, going into, into their tunnel and then coming all the way back around is like a day's worth of time to them. And imagine that in this ant farm and it's in a, it's in a home, uh, there, there's a light. Uh, at some point. So they go in and out of the tunnel, it goes dark and light, and that's, that's their measure of a day. But this, this ant farm, all those ants, they're not going anywhere. In fact, it, it's, it's a finite space they're in. They're, they're literally not going anywhere. And, and this is, you know, this is a, a mind-blowing concept to us that, that time isn't, isn't passing us by because time isn't going anywhere. We are here, you know, the sun goes up, the sun goes down, but that's actually marking a movement. It's not time at all. So that kind of obliterates time out of the equation. But then uh, this series has, has had a focus on intelligence. So much of our intelligence is based on the fact that we accumulate things over time that makes us intelligent. But what if time doesn't exist? What, what then is, how then do we understand intelligence to be? You can't say what if time doesn't exist because I've already written the book, it doesn't exist. <laughs> time doesn't move, we do. And we have a measure on that movement and we call it time, but time is not the one that's moving. So our perception of understanding time in relation to it being a moving object that we're trying to keep up with or can't keep up with in terms of being behind time or ahead of time, etc., all those expressions are a devious form of, uh, of schooling a perception that's actually not true. And it's exactly that we live exactly and no different to an ant farm. We are the ants in an ant farm because we're not going anywhere. Of course, our ant farm is you know, spectacular and wondrous and, and, and ginormous, you know, it's colossal, etc., and it has seasons, you know, all of those things. But the fact is that we don't even have sunrise and we don't even have a sunset because the sun doesn't rise and the sun doesn't set. We move. So it's all about movement. What is it about movement, about human life, human and movement? We have to understand what that is. And what is our ant farm? A planet that spins. Gravity keeps us here. And we go around the sun. And that in itself is it. That's our ant farm. We are on a planet. We spin, we go around the sun endlessly. That's our ant farm. And I just want to take a little bit of a digression here. And if you don't mind, and let's put the camera on you. You're not allowed to smile. No, you're not allowed to smile. Are you ready? You're not allowed to smile. I have to do my passport photo face. Okay, passport photo face. Go conviction. Are you ready? Gravity doesn't judge. Why have we learned to not judge? Gravity doesn't judge. Have you seen any, any black person float off the planet? <laughs> Have you ever seen a person from the way of the livingness, according to God, say, you don't belong to my religion, you're floating off. Mm. So you're falling off because I made gravity, and gravity says only Christians can be here, or only Muslims can be here, or only Jews can be here. You know, Hitler didn't have a magic wand that said to gravity, can you get rid of all these Jews because mm. I don't want them on the planet, so they're going to have to float off. Nature t tells us that it's one unified, that everything applies to everything equally. And so does the movement around the sun. That's what I'm getting at it. And it's not so much that I was making humor of something that has been uh, disastrous in the past because of the massacres that has occurred in the name of um, uh, denigration, segregation and separation and vilification. So we've got something that is telling us that it's, everything is about a moment of movement that has a quality of presence. Everything is leading to what we're doing now. And if we are going to have something called time, then let's only use time for what it is useful for. And that is to measure what we chose at any given moment 
in our endless movement. So if we say 2011, 1015 on Tuesday, blah, blah, then all we're doing is nominating or registering the movements that we chose. Now, if we have a collection of all the records of these imprints that time can give us, then time is informing the type of intelligence that we're using. So if there was war, and we can say World War II was 19 whatever to 1939 to officially to 1945, then let's say that for those six years, six and a half years or whatever it was, we chose the intelligence of war to deal with what was already a treaty that was disproportionate towards one nation that had to arise to communicate back to the world that it was already disproportional. So we have to understand how to use time as a register and then take it back to intelligence to, to, to um, expose the type of intelligence that was running the show. If we can do that, then I'm all in for time. But in terms of time being something that moves, I'm not in for that because that's actually not what happens. So all that time is good for is to measure a movement, a quality of movement. Correct, because so, we're not going anywhere. So a point in time is one of a million points in the same place. That's, that's what you're saying, we're not going anywhere. It's a million different points of movement that are happening on the one planet in the same space. And that's the accumulation of imprints that you're talking about. Yeah, just before you go on, it's like telling the ant at this point in time, this is where you were and this is what you did. That's it. But, but there's, there's, the time is not moving, it's just registering because we've been able to measure what we call 24-7. So we've got hours and minutes and, and seconds. So that can tell us where exactly each fraction of our movements, what are each fraction of our movements reg registered, what they were doing at any one time. That's it. it it's such an incarcerating illusion to believe that time is linear because this is part of the, you know, that, that saying you, you know, you're born, you pay taxes, you die or, or whatever is, is a linear projection of, of how life works. But that's the aberration because there's nothing in what you're describing or in fact in what exists in the universe that is linear. Even the clock's not linear. Even the clock's not linear. It shows this, the cycle. Uh, of time. It, it, it shows that there are cycles. It, it has to keep coming back to the same place. So you, you said before that that's the game. It's a, it's a game of return, not of advance. It's a game of returning back to a quality that is already there and making our movements that, not advancing or bettering ourselves. Can, can you explain more how the lie of betterment has incarcerated us. We have to be, uh, this will tie up all the episodes that we have done recently. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to be episodically represented when you guys put it, when your beautiful team puts it all together uh, in terms of numbering or associating it to a series, etc. We have an intelligence that is schooled, it's puppets, to accept a certain way of being. And we call that being human. Yeah? And many people, not myself, but many people have come along and said, it doesn't make sense. This is how it really is. That intelligence, it's up to that intelligence, not to kill the person, not to defame them, but to show them otherwise. In other words, intelligently show me or show anyone a way of life that works, actually works. Doesn't work because it conceals what it does, but actually works. And then you have a, you have a, a, a real viable model to champion. But the only way that the model has been able to survive questioning is by annihilating or defaming the person who actually challenges it and asks it to make sense. That's all the challenging is. Please, can you make sense? So when I came along and said there's no such thing as time because it doesn't move, show me 
tell me why we have been schooled since we were young, because it's almost a crime against education. It's a crime against humanity to tell us, to let us grow up thinking that time is a movement that we have to keep up with. When we are already moving and we can't get out of the movement, all we can do is change the quality of our movements within the movement. So life is about the quality of movement within the movement. And if you don't change the quality of the movement within the movement, then you have to subscribe to a quality. Currently, that quality has always brought impairment to humanity. I've come along and said there is a different way of movement, and that we call that the livingness, or the way of the livingness. It's something that comes from within us. It's something that we can access from our soul. So I'm no different to anybody else, and I don't consider myself any different. All I've done is shown the movements within the movements that don't belong to the prani consciousness, they belong to the fiery consciousness, which is the collective of our souls, our one soul, which we all actually belong to. So that's what all this is about. It's understanding that time is just a measurement of the type of movement that you are moving in at any given moment. So time is a measure of the quality of our movements. But in the, the live version of, of what time is, time in, in the human, you know, the, the, um, the cataloguing of human history has been about advancing our intelligence, advancing our technology. This is all a measure of time passing, you know, we go from horse and cart to car, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you've said this a number of times that the pyramids and they actually blow out that argument and in fact if we align ourselves we have to admit when we look at the technology that built the pyramids and realize that we can't even we can't replicate what they did we have to accept that that they, they were sourcing a greater intelligence than we currently have access to which therefore would suggest that they were in a movement that allowed them to have greater access to intelligence. And so that blows out of the water this idea of linear progress. And when we look at linear progress as a concept, it's a curious thing because in, in past episodes, you've also said there's this super intelligence that is, that is controlling the human being that is just throwing us crumbs. And and we, we play with the crumbs and think that we're a genius, but in fact, everything is known and we're just getting little bits of it depending on our movements and the access we get from that. And one example is when people try to explain the pyramids, it's exposed how ridiculous the things that they come up with are. And, and, and one school of thought, there was one particular researcher that wanted to prove that the Sphinx's head was actually the representation of one of the uh, kings from Egypt. And that was, that was the proof he wanted. So he did a, he did a computer generated replica over the face and mapped points that weren't even there. And then said, see, it's the likeness of the king um, based on, you know, a statue we found of the king from whatever, <laughs> you know, era um, and said, it was, you know, it's incredible proof. But the proof was found in his own projection. He projected and then he, he gauged the proof from the projection. And isn't that so much of what our intelligence that is unintelligent like? It's like we project something and then say, see, but we were the creator of the projection or this the other intelligence is the creator of the projection. I have a different approach on the word intelligence because I understand it from an energetic point of view. There's no such thing as being unintelligent. Everything is intelligence. And so the intelligence that we would call unintelligent by way of not being able to keep up with common sense is really just a form of intelligence that is playing a game of deceit. But it's actually intelligence. It knows what it's doing. It knows exactly what it is doing. You know when you overeat. You know when we eat when, when something is not uh, eating something we shouldn't. We know we drink something we shouldn't be drinking, etc., etc. You, you only have to get drunk once, wake up with a horrible hangover to know not to do it again, and yet we continue to do that. 
we also know that we can lose ourselves when we're, when we're drunk and do things that we normally wouldn't be doing. So, and we continue to do it. So we could say that's unintelligent, or we can say, no, that is an intelligence that is applying a very deliberate way of being so that it doesn't stop doing what it's doing, so it can continue its own desires. And so that's intelligence being applied very specifically. That is not unintelligence. It is not dumb to drink alcohol. It is intelligent because what you're doing is applying something you want an end result of. That's intelligence. You're producing the end result in no different terms as somebody who says, okay, I want man to fly, I'll produce an aeroplane. So what's the difference? One, one gets to be a drunk and disconnected and impaired in society and, and possibly a, um, a disruption to their family, to their, to their, to their marital uh, or work or whatever it is. And another person says, oh, I'll create an aeroplane. Now, the soul comes along and says, what's an aeroplane for? If you're going to fly around, what do you want to fly around for? What's the purpose of flying around? If you're going to fly, what do you want to fly for? So the soul comes along and says, great. Will show the world we're all one. You can get to places so you can meet other people who are just like you. Fantastic. Let's build an aeroplane. The spirit comes along and says, we need an aeroplane. We want it to be the best. We want to be compete. We want to be commercial. It's got to be the best airline in the world. And we're going to charge X amount of dollars and we'll get rich doing it. So the soul says, let's build the aeroplane. I'll give you the intelligence that will make the aeroplane, but just to show you that the world is one, that we are all the same people. That in the end, no matter where you travel, people feel the same things. They have the same expressions. Deep down, there is no division. No borders, no seas or oceans can separate the sentiment that we are on our inside. Whereas the spirit grabs the invention of that impress and converts it into a viable competitive industry whereby there is, you know, um, economy class, business class, first class, you know, this competition between prices and who the best airline is and let's reward this and all that sort of thing. So what this all means is that there is intelligence being applied all the time. But it brings us back to all of this is happening within the ant farm. So why is it happening within the ant farm? Because even the aeroplane doesn't leave the ant farm. Mm. Okay, it, it, can't, it doesn't. It doesn't travel ahead of time. It doesn't travel behind time. It can't defeat time. So the plane is traveling what we call time, but it's actually not. It's actually traveling within a movement. It's not time. It's a movement. You don't hop on an airplane and leave time or cheat time. You hop on an airplane and you are part of that movement. Call it the capture of gravity or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It is a movement. So if we are caught in a movement we can't escape, what is life about? If we can't escape the ant farm, and you know you can travel the seven seas, you haven't escaped the ant farm we're on. It doesn't matter. And what goes up goes, must come down. So go to the, the moon or back or whatever you want to go to, you come back to the ant farm. You can't leave the ant farm. So the point is, what is the movement within the movement we cannot escape. And that movement is called true movement. In other words, we need to learn to be universal. Now, what is against universal movement is the intelligence of post-cause. In other words, things occur and then we become intelligent after they have, occur they have occurred. And we have this whole array of schooling, education, even science, physics even, based on post-cause effect, when in fact everything is being already given to us by the pranic consciousness specifically, and also because everything is because of energy. So break it down for me what, what a post-cause effect might be. What does that look like in, in terms of an intelligence that we think of, of as intelligent? Well, post-cause effect is simply using the wrong fuel for the body. So if I use pranic consciousness or pranic energy to run my body, the body eventually will break down. Just before it breaks down, that energy transfers into our DNA, into our cells, etc. So it will show a chemical effect. And then later down the track, we will have a form of illness and disease. We look down the microscope, we do blood tests, you know, all those things, and we have a correlation of a point of dysfunction 
at the cellular level, at the DNA level, whatever it is. And that's great. And so we have a cure, a system of medicine based on that, which is fantastic. But that hasn't led us to the prevention of illness and disease. It's allowed us to treat it at the point where mortality rates are great. Uh, we've been able to manage ourselves out of otherwise chaos. We need to take it back before that and understand that there were movements that led to that. And those movements were caused by the energy that we have chosen. So that means if we live on an ant farm, which is effectively the movement we can't escape, we are being taught to what are you going to use to move within the movement you can't escape. That is the meaning of life. What is the movement or what is the source of fuel that is going to make you move within a movement you can't escape? Can your movement equal that which is moving to the tune that you can't escape of? That's beautiful and we could end there, but I do have one more question. Um, so basically, you've just dropped a massive bomb, if I just track back a little bit. Everything that we applaud as the most intelligent discoveries in the human world we live in, you know, like the, the cures for diseases, the, the incredible in, inventions, etc., they're all post-cause. They are. I mean, we, are, we need to celebrate those things because, as I said, we, it would be in absolute chaos if we didn't have that level of intelligence applied. I'm not against that level. I have nothing for it. I'm not challenging it. What I'm challenging is the fact that there was a cause and we're not placing the correct intelligence on the true root cause that led to that in the first place. So we're making, we have post-cause heroes. Yes. We need heroes of the pre-cause. Yeah. We need to understand what Hermes was teaching us and Pythagoras and, other, and others that were saying there is, a, there is a spiritual cause, there is a soulful um, impulse that can take us out of this. Beautiful, because it's like we wouldn't knock um, the ambulance officer that is on the scene and is doing amazing work to resuscitate someone. Absolutely. Amazing, amazing work. But, but all of our focus is on mitigating the end result. What you're saying is where, it, where is our focus and uh, investment in understanding what happens before the accident, before the illness, before the injury. Well, a snapshot of reality, the snapshot of the type, type of intelligence that we have ended up with isn't just that the suicide rates. If you want an, an immediate access to the type of model of life that we have subscribed to, you'd have to spend a, a day in, in accident and emergency, in the, the accident and emergency department of any hospital and see what humanity is doing to themselves. And so we call it accident, but you know, if you, if you dig a little bit deeper, people are making decisions, so-called decisions, but are they really decisions? They're not. And once we get into the, the idea that they're not decisions, and that it's actually a fuel or a source of energy that we're aligned to that's causing this in the first place, shouldn't that be celebrated? I mean, when are we going to run out of money? When is, when is enough enough? Like what, what level of suffering and how many more trillions upon trillions upon trillions do we need to spend until we actually ask the question, what is causing all of this in the first place? And are we really interested in, 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 in any way? And the reason why we're not is there's no stimulation. There's no real reward. There is no stimulation for understanding that all it takes is an alignment. We want to have that complex thinking and intelligence and genius and someone coming up with it and well isn't complexity part part of 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 a, a post-cause stimulation you know like you've you you've got a problem and you have to work it out but you, ne you never look from behind the curtain as to why it all occurred you just work out what what, what you know put the crumbs in a new order and say look this is much better you know it's it, that that's part of that post-cause conundrum complexity is an illusion it's fed to us. It doesn't even exist. Because the intelligence that's feeding us that just puts us into a situation where we don't know something, and we get complicated, and then it'll just give us the answer when it's ready. It's very simple. We're just being played with. You know, we're the rag, rag doll that's every now and then is allowed to have a good time. Every now and then is allowed to get a reward. But let's, you know, let's study the rag doll 
the type of ragdoll that that model has produced. Let's study its every movement and you'll see that it doesn't have a consistency with harmony, love and truth, joy and stillness. And so we want ragdolls that actually have that because in and the end... And become real boys. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Whether it's we're the from, story. We're, correct. You got me. Yeah. That's the end. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Once we're once we're connected and aligned to our soul, we we feel what life can truly be. Like. Yeah. We we want to be the real Pinocchio. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Thanks, Ed. Thank you, Rebecca.